Killian Jornet, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I'm, I'm actually listening to your podcast when I'm running during the long runs, and it's it's always like entertaining and learning a lot. So uh, it's a it's a real honor to be here. Oh, Killian, the honor is all mine, and uh, it's quite humbling to know that you sometimes listen to the podcast. And I've wanted to have you on for a long time, and I'm really glad that we can finally organize it. I know we've both been very busy, and uh, I want to start our conversation by talking about what you've been busy with, that being the launch of your new brand, Normal, and I want to open it with a very broad question. I just read a book called Start With Why, and it's all about how in business, everything needs to be mission-driven. So, you know, there obviously needs to be like this deep feeling of purpose in order to take on the enormity of this type of project. So I wanted to start by just letting you tell us what the mission is of normal. Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. First of all, the, you say the why, uh, I believe that it's something very important and everything we do on life, we need to, to try to to ask ourselves like why we are doing that, and it's uh, it seems very obvious, but it's it's not because many times we get drawn on on life and things that is happening and, and impressions and things, and and we don't spend the time to think okay why I'm doing this or why I I want to do this else, and and for me um I think uh, all my career since I started um as a teenager to to do sports on not professionally but like in a serious way like that was my main purpose it was to to train and to try to perform so i had mentors i had like a support from different teams from like national teams and from different sponsors and all that so i have been uh, receiving a lot like uh, i have been getting a lot from from many people, from uh, many brands, from many um, yeah institutions too. So on a point, uh, we like we realize that the sport is something that it's very egocentric in a way because like we are putting a lot of not only for ourselves like uh, um, putting a lot of hours, putting a lot of efforts, but also for the people that it's around. Like if you have like people that it's supporting you, they are dedicating part of their time being paid or not. Like, I mean, like you can have physiotherapists or like coaches, but also like family and they are dedicating a lot of time. So you can go to the race or a project and and then it's just to feel an emotion, no? Yeah. So it's like to, to ask for a lot, just for, for a feeling, for an emotion. And, and in a way, like I believe that the sport have a, a big role on society when it comes to to the physical activity, to being healthy, to being, to move because we are animals and we need to move to, to keep health. And, and also when it comes to, to exploration, to discovering things, to human exploration, to, to thinking, uh, to mental health, it's, it's very important. And, and I, I always struggled a lot about who am I as a public person, because I'm, I'm very, very introvert. Mm. And I, I had been struggling for many years on, yeah, anxiety and that. On that's why we moved to Norway, like to, to be <laughs> isolated. <laughs> but uh, it's been very difficult, like to accept that. And, and one of the reasons it was mostly that that I'm just a runner. I'm just someone that put one feet after the other a bit faster than others, but nothing more. Yeah. And and to to understand why I'm doing that. And, and what I can give in return, it's it's been taking a lot of time, but uh, I think uh, I, I came to an end and and that started, I would say, um, uh, when I was going to Lantan to climb or like we were going to 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 climb Everest, but uh, then it was the earthquake and we end up uh, doing some uh, uh, like helping in Lantan, like trying to yeah. to find bodies, to find people, and 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 doing that, and we realize or I realized that. It was possible through our capacities as a sportsman to to help society, and then like we made the video and we raised money for for building houses there. So it was like okay, sport can be not only like 
for that emotion at the end, but uh, it can it can have a a meaning behind that, a mission. And um, that was the the seed to start about the, the Kijin Junior Foundation to start to say, okay, we want to do more projects about the uh, environment to how how we can preserve the the nature that we all enjoy. And mostly because also being very very honest, like the planet will keep like the the geography, mm -hmm. uh, the, the geology will will stay. Doesn't matter if it's uh, global warm or anything, but it's it's biodiversity that will die, and, and we are biodiversity, so we will die as a human species. So it, it was more to save ourselves, like that we need to fight, and that was one of the reasons to start the foundation. And then uh, I think um, that. With my, uh, I, I'm pretty geeky when it comes to gear. I'm very, very geeky. So I love <laughs> no, gear. I love designing. <laughs> uh, so these two things together, it was kind of a, an idea I had in my mind to to start something uh, by myself. But it's it's only like an idea. You know that it's just kind of a dream that it will never happen. Yeah. But uh, but it was then, born out of the feeling of wanting to be of service to give back a little bit more and in line with your environmental values. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the mission of then it's to, to, to enjoy and preserve nature to, to, because we love a sport, but, uh, but we need to do it responsibly. I love that. And, uh, yeah. Because sport does have, as you said, so much power to change the world. And especially with an athlete of your stature coming in, you know, to create a new business, who at its core is there to advocate for the environment, but also advocate for people being out and being able to enjoy the environment. Obviously, like everybody knows you worked closely with Solomon for more than half your life. I think it was like 18 years. I think 18 was, years. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> insane. You guys had amazing success together. Obviously you're the best trail mountain runner in history, one of the great athletes of all time, in my opinion. And I wonder if there was any kind of internal conflict about leaving a partner of so many years. And when did you begin to consider creating this own, your own brand? And was there any, yeah, was there any internal conflict about leaving what had probably become a big part of your sort of personal identity? Yeah, it, it wasn't an easy decision. It was like, because uh, I'm not the kind of person that changed like to one brand to another just because like money or because like uh, whatever. Uh, I've been with Salomon for like, it's been my only sponsor when it comes to trail running since I started uh, when I was like uh, from 2004. So it's been a lot of years. And, um, and we've been working like on crazy projects and together and it's been an amazing journey. Um, but um, it came like very natural in the way that uh, I had this idea I was mentioning about like, yeah, it would be nice to start something. But uh, but being realistic, it was, it's very, very difficult. So then I, I just, it just happened that a friend of mine uh, knew also some people that uh, was uh, uh, the, the Flusha family, that uh, it's, uh, it's a family from Mallorca that they were thinking about the same, like they wanted to, they have, um, they are a shoe manufacturers, not in a sport, but on um, on lifestyle. And they wanted to start to do camper, something. Camper. Yeah, brand. camper. Yeah. Camper. So they, they were thinking about doing something on outdoor, more on like a sport. And... And this friend of common just say, you should talk guys because he he know my ideas and, and he knew them very well too. And now uh, we were we were just like going to to talk a bit and and from the first moment we we didn't talk much about like uh uh what a product should look, but we were talking a lot about what was the role of a company, what how a company should be like responsible when it comes to the society, to the environment, and uh, and the importance of of the design and all that, and the importance of mm, yeah, like looking on that on a very holistic way. So we were like, it's 
it was very natural. It, it, it didn't feel hard to leave Salomon after all these years because of that. Mm. It would be, I, I, I wouldn't leave Salomon just for a, if I, yeah, if, if, if I didn't feel that the, that was the right thing to do. And mm. yeah, I'm, I'm happy for it. I, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a lot of work. It's an amazing, yeah. um, yeah, it's a lot of time, but, uh, yeah. but I'm, I'm learning a lot and it's, uh, it's just uh, great to, to learn about all that. Yeah. Incredible. But you're a, a huge part and to building Solomon into what it is now, you just talked about how you're a geek about equipment and many of their products were inspired by your approach to the mountains. And you really did change in a lot of ways, how people of our generation approach the mountains. And I'd be curious to hear, I mean, maybe it's too personal, but just sort of like how they reacted when you said you were going to be doing this new project, because I'm sure it was hard for everyone, even if it was for the best was, I mean, there was beautiful respect back and forth and it seemed like mutual appreciation for the contributions, both to what you brought to them and what they brought to you. But uh, I'm curious, you know, what, what it felt like to sort of have those conversations with them and, and how they felt about you. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not a conversation that you want to have. No? Yeah. It's not the conversation that you, you are like going like, uh, yeah, happy to eat, but uh, but it's needed, and 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 it's um, it's just part of of a path. And we know, like, uh, uh, life it has different chapters, and 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 at the end, it's not about companies, but it's about people. I would say, like, and um, I am still very very friend with all the people I have been working in Salomon, like uh, yeah. with Serge, Patrick, all the designers, with the people in marketing. So it's not because I'm now starting. Uh, uh, a business and like uh, trying to 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 build products and and to to be in the in the market that uh, we will not talk to each other or like each other, but it's the opposite. Like it's I I believe that we need to look more about cooperation and and in the future it should be more that uh, and I think in US it's uh, a bit better. In Europe companies they they are very. They they tend to preserve a lot, to not uh, not share resources, not share like a, uh, um, not collaborate a lot. And I think it's it's something that we should do more because like if we want to, we're talking about environmental responsibility that that will come on on sharing the knowledges and and when it comes to athletes, like why uh, why how we can improve the the. Um, the athletes are uh, living and like how the, the circuits now it's, it's, it's a completely mess now with all the circuits and the, uh, <laughs> yeah. and the, the federations and wherever. So how can we work together for that? It's about cooperating. So that comes to the people. And I think that, uh, I, I'm very friend with, with all the people that I have been working with Salomon and that will, I'm sure that that will not change. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. And that was sort of my expectation. And I think it's good for the community to know that, you know, that you guys can part, part ways with a lot of mutual respect and appreciation for what you were able to do together. You just mentioned that life has chapters and you and your partner, Emily, you know, she's obviously a big part of this new project as well with normal. You guys have two kids now. <laughs> Does this feel like the next chapter of your lives together? And, and maybe tell us what it's like to be able to work on this almost as a family, you know, with your partner and Emily, who's also one of the best of all time. So, yeah, no, it's, I think we are pretty chill out, both of us. Like we are not, we are very relaxed on, on taking things, but uh, it's, I would say it's, it's good to th do things together uh, on a way uh, of course, like uh, Emily is also an ambassador for Normal, and uh, she's part of the team, and she have uh, very good ideas when it comes to to gear too, uh, and especially when uh, more on a on a woman's vision, it's it's just very important, and also uh, all what she's doing with um, with uh, Mumbai, like uh, she have uh, also a 
a company with uh, Ida Nilsson and, and Mimi Cota. They are doing like um, um, some organic nutrition. food, like bars and nutrition and all that. So um, we can also talk about like the challenges that it's in, in, in companies and, and the responsibility of the companies and how how to face because it's it's a lot of um moments that uh that um yeah if if you want to have a success and, and by success i don't mean to earn more money but uh but to be sustainable economically and and to be doing good like uh some choose some choices they will uh not be obvious and, and you will need to compromise sometimes and to, to have these discussions together it's uh, it's very interesting it's very important uh also with uh uh, of course, uh, with my partners with Camper, but with with Emily, I think that uh, we are in, in a chapter now that it's like try to to change to be like just like two kids that we were like mm, running around and playing and having just fun and 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 like uh, living in the van to now having two kids and like uh, needing to two businesses, down the, <laughs> yeah, business and like the, the logistics of like all these. It's a lot, so it's yeah. Like, how to have meetings and and, and the and being with the kids that we believe that it's very important to be present and, and to train because like at the end like I I uh, I want to be an athlete and Emily too and, and to to manage all these I think we are we are finding our ways on on these. Yeah. Well it's great to enter this new chapter together. I'm sure it comes with a lot of challenges, but probably comes with a lot of joy to do it together as a family. So talking about the structure of the business now, you mentioned a second ago, your partners in Camper, a footwear brand based in Spain and Mallorca. I don't think many American listeners will be familiar with Camper. So maybe introduce mm -hmm. them and tell us how you came to be connected and, and maybe how normal and Camper fits together practically. Yes. Yeah, so actually um, Camper is a family owned uh, business. Uh, so it's a family, the family Fusha that owns the the company, and and they they have a tradition of like making footwear for uh, more than 150 years. So it was a big um, know how and a big industry in Mallorca about footwear. And um, then uh, when Camper started uh, by Jorgen um, Fusha, uh, that is the 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 father of the actual CEO of uh, of camper mm, it was found that they it's it's a big company nowadays like uh, they they have uh exports all over the world but they they are still very familiar like it's a uh, it's a family that owns the, the business and they have a very uh strong vision on 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 the social responsibility would say and also on the environmental responsibility they they have been building like a uh, mm, fully recyclable shoes for for long and they have been building uh uh working a lot with the durability and with with that since the beginning and and on a way that i like it that is not about promoting it but it's just because they believe that it's the way to do it and i think um that's one very important challenge that we we are facing that when you look to social media like uh Everybody's talking about like the, the carbon footprint, and everybody's talking about the materials, about the sustainability. But when you talk to commercials, nobody in the shop asks about sustainability. Mm. They ask about performance, about price, and about that. So um we need to build sustainable like products, but uh, because we believe it, not because it's a marketing tool. So that's uh, that's something that uh, when we were talking together from the first time, like I it really resonate to them that they say, okay, we we are a company, we are a family that we have a company and we want to, to be successful in business because uh they yeah, they believe on the on the role of business into the the, the society and the and the people there like to to give jobs and to give uh, also like um uh with that money um, not having stakeholders, it helps also to to be able to choose what you do with uh with the money, um, but also what's the it's uh, the, the the social and the environmental responsibility. It's something that that the, they believe that it's uh, important to do, but it's not a tool that they use in marketing. So then, some moments you can use it on a more holistic way and not 
try to get uh, uh, caught in in what's the last trend of the thing. So, so that's <laughs> something that uh, that I really like it from them. Um, but mostly, yeah, it's uh, it's just a family that uh, they uh, they love. They they really love to to make shoes. They they are <laughs> very passionate about that. And yeah. and um, and then like um, we made a partnership. So um, it's a uh, it's a company between the 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 two of of us. And and then uh, we we just. Uh, found uh, uh people that they are also like a, a team of uh very passionate like uh, all the people that is working in the brand they are uh young people that love sports love other sports and uh and that they are very talented because at the end like um i'm an athlete like i have good ideas about uh gear but uh we need to have people that they can translate that into yeah. actual products and and that's uh, that's the most important that uh, you have people that they are very talented on on making the the values of the company and the, in making the the products uh, uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. So you take some of this experience cultivated over 150 years from the Camper brand and build a small team around Normal, and they probably help you with the manufacturing part of the product creation. Is that yeah, kind of how it works? It, yeah, a bit like that. It's it's more like normal have a its own team that it's uh it's not um uh they are two I'm different companies. Yeah, okay. A, a part of Camper, so it's not like it's not normal inside of Camper, but they are two separate companies. Yeah. Um, but then of course, like uh we are using uh the, the know-how of Camper and, and, and also like the uh, all the kind of the back office and that because it's a lot of uh, of work on that and and we have yeah. not the, the 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 people and the resources for that so we are using the the all that from camper but also uh what i was super surprised like uh knowing like a bit of the other industry is that uh when we went to to camper like for doing the prototypes it was like uh okay i have this idea and then like the day after uh one of the of the designers came like with with a mock-up like a prototype saying okay yeah I, we have a 3d machine here so like uh, i made just a mock-up it's like wow well, normally that takes like months because you need to send the <laughs> the designs to so they, they are very advanced um on on some technologies on making uh um prototypes and and that's been like uh, super super resourceful to to be able to advance on on the ideas and and that's because even if they they yeah they they are new in the in the technical footwear for for others but they they know very well how to make shoes and, and that's uh, that yeah. is a big big start cool i was just curious about the structure of the businesses and how you guys fit together but it makes perfect sense so obviously like you've been an athlete your whole life as you mentioned you've been sponsored by solomon mm-hmm. since 2004. And even before that, you were competing at a high level, I think, as a kid. You've always felt that you were an athlete, still are, best in the world. Mm -hmm. But entrepreneurship's a different ballgame. I wonder what your experience has been like entering the business world. Do you find the same kind of focus and determination that you've brought to your training has translated into this new business venture? Yeah, I, I'm 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 a bit like a workaholic sometimes. Like uh, it's like when I focus on training, I can focus a lot. When I focus on an idea, I can focus a lot on that. I also like the things I don't like. I I really like I I I, I give a shit. Like I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put zero interest and zero. So it's uh, uh, but it's important to know it. Like it's important. I I know what I'm good yeah. or like what I, I can do and what I can do and 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 then like uh, to find people that it's uh, very good on that and to to not try to to overstep on, on things that I, I know that I I'm not good at um so uh I love product I love gear I love the the development I I love also like what's the, the the marketing or like the 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 values and and the the role of a company as, as we mentioned but then uh, it's things that I'm learning like about the the business side that 
uh, I, I'm not that interested on that. I, I believe that it's important because it needs to be, as I mentioned before, a company needs to be uh, sustainable economically. So it needs to have a success to be able to invest and to be able to, 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 yeah, to, to pay the salaries. Um, but uh, about the rest, like I'm not that interested. So I, I, I'm, I'm learning a lot, but I'm. It's it's always like you go where you like. So I, you, you I, I'm on always you going care. more on the problem. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, but I mean, like we're building a business right now too, and I've definitely felt that I've had to sacrifice my athletic life at times, just because free trail has been sort of all consuming. You're also a father of two while you're building this startup. <laughs> have you noticed something similar? Like, have you noticed that you've had to sacrifice your own training at all in service of this new goal? It's, I would say like, I'm training the same amount as before, but I'm training better, I would say, or I'm training like, Bef I'm realizing that before I was losing a lot of hours mm -hmm. on doing nothing productive. <laughs> and it's very helpful to have Emily here that she's very strict, right, too. <laughs> so when it comes to the logistics, like we 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 plan like the the um, the schedules and, and 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 the trainings and that. So so it's um I would say um uh, because the, Physically, the last uh, three years has been the, the the three years that has been the strongest, uh, and it's been when building all these things, the foundation and the and now normal, and I believe that it's also coming and because with the girls we needed to be much more structured. Like uh, mm. we wanted to be there for them, so like uh, spending like half of the day each of us with the girls, and and then that means that the hours that we need to train. Uh, we were really going for the training and it was not just like, okay, hang around and like uh, see when the weather is good and just go now. And then, okay, now I, I go to chat with that guy or that. No, no, now it's like, okay, I have three hours for training. So <laughs> I, I do my workout, I do that. And then, and I think it's also like to, to change the focus on it, like uh, uh, to, to be able to, when, when I'm not training, then it's I'm home and it's a uh, focus hundred percent on the girls and, and you're not thinking out if your shape is good or bad or or focusing on the on on the the charge with the with the team on on on, on the company and normal or or uh, on the project and the foundation. So it's it's good. Like I, I love to do things and, and it's good to to not be only thinking about okay, I'm in good shape or I'm bad shape because before it's more like you have a lot of time and, and, and you are training, but you are training like uh, four hours a day. You are spending a few hours like just doing things that they are not giving anything. And then you are just like uh, going around. So it's, uh, I would say it's, it's a lot of logistics, like logistics yeah. sometimes is not easy. And, and probably it's more that uh, we cut on, uh, a lot on traveling but also that was also a choice before from from the footprint but um but uh, on the rest you're, uh, you're still able to train yeah. like you always have so that's yeah. great yeah so let's talk more about the sustainability mission of the company because it seems like this is sort of the core foundation from which you're approaching the market those of us who have followed you for a long time know that you're a passionate environmentalist. You've got your foundation. And we also know that sort of the footwear and apparel industries can be quite wasteful. So talk about the sustainability elements of normal and how you plan to improve on the status quo of the industry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a huge subject and it's, um, it's a lot of um, angles to, to look at it. Uh, I would say one is like about the product, uh, what you are building, how you are building it. And, and on that, it's important. Our, our way to look at it is first like durability. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, a product that lasts long, it's a product that, uh, that it's, uh, it's more sustainable because uh, it will have a... Um, uh, a longer life so it means that uh, you will 
extract less uh, resources from 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 earth or even if it's coming from recycled like you will have a, a longer like a life cycle uh, so we we are really focusing on durability durability comes also with functionality because if you make something assure that it's made on iron like of course it will be very durable but uh, it will not be functional so really working on on those on, on the durability and when it comes to durability then it comes also with the everything that it's uh, after uh, when it's worn that comes to repairability, uh, it comes to circularity. So it's something that we are really working on it. And, and that's, um, it's not only about uh, the materials. We believe that it's important to use materials that they are more sustainable, but uh, but not in um, uh, in detriment of the, of the durability. So I would say first is to, to make that day last and then to use the best materials for it. Um, and, and when it comes to the, the repairability or the circularity, it's, uh, it's important to think about what are the materials that I'm building this product with, but also when it comes to design, how it's, because you need to imagine, okay, this product when it's worn, how I will separate the, the, the materials to, to recycle, how I will be able to, to yeah, to repair or to recycle those 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 materials, and what's the infrastructure that they need behind to to make that possible? Because uh, today it's many many yeah products that they are potentially circular or potentially repairable, but it's not the infrastructure to make it possible. So um, so that's uh, that's a big thing to to work on it. And, and then uh, it's about also uh, durability is not only when it comes to to the the product lasting, but uh, it's also about the the style, like uh, how long will you want to wear this product, and that uh, that's about the timeless, like to make timeless designs, so that uh, its colors or its uh, shapes that uh, they will not get old in two years. Mm. Uh, like we see in, especially in, um, in, the, in the sports industry that we are following trends. Like uh, it's the collection of the year, it's this color or is this shape. Every season. It goes yeah. every season, like uh, all the yeah. runs they are like, and that's like just to invite people to, to replace the older garment, not because it's worn, but only because it feels old. So like uh, how to work against that, to, to fight about uh, making products that they are durable, but that, yeah, we believe that if we make a design that is good, uh, we don't need to change it until we find a better uh, solution when it comes to materials or to functionality, but not because just changing a bit the color or changing the, the the shape because it's it's a trend and I think um, that here uh, it's it's a challenge because you need to 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 make money to be able to to sustain the team to to sustain the business and to to invest on like uh, better materials or to invest on on uh, on better um, uh, factories but uh, but that cannot come with uh, promoting our consumption. And, uh, and we have a problem about consumption in yeah. in general in the world, but also the other industry. And we are trying to figure out how to how to make that possible. Yeah, you say also on the website that you want the products to be multifunctional. Of course, you're not just a trail runner; you're also a ski mountaineer, an alpinist. Do you have plans to? have products across those different categories like is this going to be more than trail running product yeah uh, we we consider ourselves as an outdoor company mm -hmm. so we are doing like a uh, footwear apparel and accessories but uh uh i i really don't like the terms like okay i'm a trail runner i'm an alpinist or i'm a skier like I love to be out in the nature. <laughs> yeah. That's all. And 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 then like uh, I I'm often using the same like pants to to go climbing and to go skiing, 
or to go running when it's cold and the same t-shirt for like as a first layer of skiing or like as a as a as a t-shirt for running so like why we need to make different products that they have the same fun- like functionality of them so that's something also that uh, uh i believe and, and, and we believe in normal that uh with less products we can do the same activities so work on on that multifunctionality of the products and because we are all doing more or less but it's just like that need to resonate on the on the range of the of the of the brands yeah so eventually i want to get around to your own competitive season so we'll sort of wind down the conversation about normal but i'd love to hear what your goals are for the company do you envision this being something that is like a global iconic brand competing with the likes of Solomon and the North Face, or do you think it's going to be kind of like a, a small sort of family oriented business, or is it too early to tell? What are your goals? Uh, yeah, it's it's too early to tell, and, and it, it's very it's like when you do a project, like uh, when you think about the race, like it's very easy to make a PowerPoint and say, okay, we'll attack there, and I will, but then reality it's it's different. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we will see. Uh, like our goal is to. I believe that companies, if they want to make a change, uh, they need to be successful too. Um, because uh, it's, um, I will like make the, the parallelism with the food industry, but I think it's a very good example that uh, uh, we know that uh, agriculture, it has a big problem when it comes to, to greenhouse uh, gases emissions and when it comes to land use, and and it needs to change all the the agriculture model, no? Mm-hmm. But um, like it's uh, for for me, it's uh, easy to go to a local farmer and, and buy like a, a organic food, or like to have a garden in the house and and to to buy food that or like to to grow the food or to 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 buy only very sustainable food. But that's because. I I have I, I'm wealthy like I, I have a um, yeah I can afford it yeah but uh, the problem is that uh, if the wealthy only the wealthy people can afford like a, a sustainable uh, food uh, that will not change like the the system and and, and we need a, a system a systemic change so that will come when the most part all what would be the best but if the most part of the food around like in in supermarkets in in the stores is sustainable uh it's uh coming from regenerative agriculture is coming from uh, uh more local producers and that don't affect the price or like the average price is uh, based on 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 good food when it comes to to that then it it then we can start to think about changing uh, the system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's the same, I think, in the industry that um, companies, it's important that it's uh, niche companies, that uh, they are really working uh, for um, for products that they are uh, uh, in the best, like, uh, uh, yeah, working only with the most sustainable products and, and that, and that's, that's super important because it, it gives a lot of research. It, it invests a lot on on uh, uh, on investigation and research on finding new materials on testing these materials on that. But we also need like large companies that they say we want our products to have uh, very high standards when it comes to sustainability. Mm-hmm. And and that comes, I would say, with the average sustainability of the of the companies. Like not a company that have a product that it's super sustainable but where the sales come from like where the uh the yeah the the products that the company sells the most are very bad uh that that's not good i would say we need to have like a very like the average of the, the 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 environmental footprint uh of the company needs to be to be the 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 lowest yeah. and that comes from working together and, and when it comes to cooperation is about that is that companies that they are focusing more on materials mm-hmm. uh that means that uh, 
uh, if then bigger companies they they want those materials and, and then these materials will be a bit cheaper so it will be more accessible to have better materials it will come to design like finding better design solutions for for that and that's uh, i believe that cooperation in that is a big big player yeah. but um yeah and then our place in the in the market we will see it like yeah. uh, we as athletes, we are ambitious, but uh, then reality puts you in your place, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think the sky's the limit, and I think you have the right attitude that it can be a big thing, but not at the expense of compromising your values of sustainability. And I think the type of outdoor consumer that you guys are targeting will resonate with that message, not only with your personal reputation both as an athlete, but as an advocate for the environment, but also with what you're building and the vision and the values that the brand has, which is what we started our conversation with. So let's move to your athletic career. But last question here, I, I'd be <laughs> irresponsible not to ask on, uh, or just sort of like when products are going to start being available. I'd love to just give you an opportunity to talk about when the launch is, you've sort of brought the brand out of stealth mode. You've started revealing some of your ambassadors when can people expect to see some of the products you're bringing out? We we are thinking and hoping for uh, the fall. So um, now we we has been testing uh, the products. Uh, uh, we are still testing, but we are very confident what about what we have and we are producing. And you know very well how how is this? It takes time and yeah. and uh, and yeah. But uh, we are we are thinking that in the fall it will be it will be available. So yeah. Right. Awesome. Well, keep us posted. So um, yeah, let's, let's pivot over to your athletic life. I know you've been very busy building this company and tending to your family, but you said you've been training as much as normal, which is very high volume. You posted that this season you're going to be doing Zagama, Hard Rock, Sierras and all UTMB, all races that you've already won multiple times. Zagama is coming up in just a few weeks and you're going for your 10th victory already at that race. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. You've already won that race nine times. How has your training gone this winter and spring? And how are you feeling about your running fitness with all you have going on, especially as somebody who spends your winter on skis? It's been, it's been good. Like uh, I haven't been injured that's the first thing like uh nothing since uh since uh two years ago so that's i believe that it's not about like making huge sessions but about being very consistent and at least um i'm, I'm happy with uh uh since last autumn when i finished last season uh i've been consistent so and um, also because with the with the kids actually I, i'm running much more now in the winters because oh. Um, like, uh, let's say like normally, like, uh, Emily goes train in the morning. So like, uh, uh, when we leave, uh, uh, our older daughter to the, to the kindergarten and then she goes training and then at midday we change. So I go skiing. And then, uh, when the girls are sleeping, I'm doing a second session and the second session is in the treadmill. So uh -huh. I have been running like not much, but I think like, uh, between 50 and 70 kilometers per week, mm -hmm. uh, on the treadmill, like all winter around. So when I started running like a few weeks ago, it didn't feel like, uh, yeah, like, uh, breaking like some yeah. years before it was like just the first week of running after seven months, it was like horrible. So this, this year it's been like more progressive and now I, I, I made some, good blocks uh, of training uh, so I'm, I'm i'm happy about how it is like it's up and downs like always but uh, but i'm consistent and i'm looking to to the times and things i i, I think i'm i'm in my like good normal shape so then it comes to races how it unfolds but uh, but i'm i'm happy with the with the building to till the gamma then it would be a challenge the three other because they are very close but that that would be a nice game to to try to to figure out how to do it yeah i'm curious killian because i know this is just popping into my head but i know you're a fan of sports and you follow different competitive outlets you know from 
you know, I mean, you tell me, but I know you follow like cycling and track and field and probably a lot of other sports, maybe football, soccer. Who are some of the athletes you look up to? Because I mean, you're obviously just like this icon in the world of mountain sport. And I'm sure there's some people who you look to for inspiration from other sporting disciplines. Who are some of those people? I'd be curious to hear. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of coaches, actually. It's a lot of uh, of um, physiologists or uh, or um, uh, biologists, nutritionists. That uh, because it's also very important. Like we 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 follow the athletes, but some athletes are very interested about like the training, and some they 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 don't care at all. So uh -huh. I I found more interesting to follow the different. Um, uh, yeah, coaches and, and try to talk with them about uh, how do they, uh, because like we can follow nowadays, I think we have too many information in general when we follow athletes uh -huh. that, uh, oh, this athlete is doing this. And, and then we try to see what's the methodology behind and we find the methodology, but, uh, but it's difficult to see uh, what are the, the principles uh, on that methodology and, and like to to just try to 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 do the same that other athletes that that's the most stupid thing that someone can do because like the principle of individuality it's it's gone so I believe that it's more important to talk with the coaches and see okay what are the ideas behind if they are thinking about um, uh, more uh, aerobic kind of training or more about like the uh, the the uh, the, the neuromuscular part or the um more uh, the, the mental part or about uh, how to 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 yeah to plan the seasons or uh, so all these ingredients how it comes and then to try to see how you can apply that to one individual that can be uh, oneself so uh, following uh, and um like if people go to my probably my twitter account is where i follow because it's where is more discussions. If they see what, who I'm following, they will see like uh, all these coaches and, <laughs> and then trying to, to see that. But when it comes to athletes, um, many, I would say, and for different reasons, I, I love like climbing world because uh -huh. it's a lot about um, uh, the, the game with uh, mentally, like alpinism, uh, how to, to be able to push, like, and to be able to, to mentally play, to 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 endure, and I think um, um, climbers they are excellent on that. Uh, of course, it's uh, guys like uh, Alex Connell uh, that uh, they are really pushing that, or or, or Tommy Caldwell, but also like uh, Danny Arnold. Uh, it's uh, it's a very good young generation in France with. Uh, um, uh, Benjamin Bedrins or uh, Charles, uh, um, that they are really pushing us to the limits and, and to follow what these guys are doing, it's it's incredible. And, and then other sports, athletics, I, I love, I, I'm a very bad like uh, runner when it comes to, to run on, on flat, but I love to see uh, what they are doing. And, and like all the Norwegians, I think they are doing a very good job when it comes to training. And uh, I was just gonna say- athletes, <laughs> I, I read an article in Outside yesterday about how Norwegians train, basically. So this just popped into my head also, because, of course, you yeah. live in Norway now and like the Ironman World Championships happening this weekend in St. George. And two of the favorites are Norwegians, the Olympic 1500 meter runners, Norwegian. I think they said yeah. the population of Norway is the same size as the state of Texas here. In yeah, it's like five million. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, but it's incredible talent, especially in sort of the in, endurance sport. Has that influenced you at all? You're living there in Norway for several years now. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's more talent than than. Of course, it's not more talent than other countries, but it's uh, when it comes to sport and to success, it's a lot about culture. I would say more than. Then, like, yeah, of course, they, they give people, like, uh, if they find a way, they will succeed. But it, it's a lot about the culture. And that's why probably Kenyans are also uh, so good on, on athletics. Uh, it's because, uh, and, and here the example in Norway is that they are really looking in the long term. Uh, it's uh, like 
some rules like uh, in competitions, like it's not um, like results on competitions until 13 years old. So younger kids, they are competing, but they are not being uh, like uh, better or worse kind of like, so you are not uh, saying to a kid, uh, okay, you are like uh, slower than this, you are worse than that. It's, it's wow. like fun and, and it's building a lot about the, the multi-sport, about like people, the love of training, more of like the competition itself. So it, it creates this, uh, yeah, this culture of being out and practicing and, and not not focusing on the result, but on like the being on the teams, being on the on, on part of the of the movement. And also like some kids, like they develop slower than others. So like some talents they will show up later. And and if if you are really focusing on 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 results from a very young age, those kids they either they will not um be selected for teams so they will have uh, uh, not the same coaching opportunities but also many will get um, motivated to to keep competing. So I think that's a big, big um, thing that they have here. And then like just the love of outdoors and, and endurance because everyone is like going either cross-country skiing or hiking and old people, young people, like kids around. So I think it's it's about the culture on that and like having sport as as part of the of the lifestyle. Yeah, and then like, um, and then like, that translates when it comes to to competition. Like uh, now, you are mentioning the the triathlon, um, the 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 coach, like the the triathlon federation. They they set a goal like ten years ago. I think it was two thousand ten that they wanted to make a medal in two thousand twenty. Mm. So they started with athletes like Christian, and uh, they were like. I think 15, 16 years old at the time. And they say, okay, the goal is not to, to win a race next year, but it's to win in 10 years. Wow. So they could work on like the uh, aerobic capacity and on not focusing on the short-term results. And I think that's a huge problem. It's the same in Kenya. Like uh, I, I would say it's many people training together and, and, and competing together and like looking for the long-term and, and that's that's one problem that we have many of the of the countries uh, on Occident that we are looking so much for the short term when it comes yeah. to sport that only the very gifted people stands out but many gifted people they they just are lost on the way because yeah. we we're because looking the short term, term mentality yeah. that's fascinating and uh, I didn't know that about the triathlon federation in norway but just for our listeners christian blumenfeld norwegian did manage to win the olympic gold medal in triathlon this year so that's an amazing story i think he's making i think it's his iron man debut at the world championship this weekend so hopefully he'll make uh, norway proud so back to uh your season in killian i think you know the highlight of the year for you is going to be the hard rock utmb double and i think people might forget that you did this already in 2017 when you won hard rock and then finished second to francois in one of you know the most exciting most competitive 100 mile races in history you were close there you were i I wasn't close enough i wasn't close enough (laughs) um but i'm curious you know how you're thinking about that what are your goals for those two races and is there anything that you learned from 2017 that you maybe hope to improve on i think it's it's very different approach from 2017 because for me 2017 was like focus on everest so i built my season on like everest and then it was like huge training block on uh february march april and then uh and then after Everest, I was, I think I got a lot of stamina, but uh, my my season was like, it was huge, the, the training effort on, especially on April uh, and March on April. And, and then of course the expedition. So so I, I say, okay, I'm, I'm in good shape. I, I go for like a trail running season, but it was, I didn't plan to do any trail like this this summer it was more like okay i'm i'm happy with the expedition so just like have fun in the summer and then it was it was like i was feeling so good because it was uh of course it was hard rock and then i think i was going to 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 sierra Rinaldo, 
and uh, and then UTMB and then then some more races. But I was like I was burned out. I think uh, after um, uh, yeah, I think I managed to 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 get a good hard rock and to get a good serginal and to 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 get a good UTMB, but mostly because like the the background, I would say, <laughs> not yeah. really on on the preparation for it. Um, so uh, the approach is is completely different, and, and, and maybe it works better, maybe not, uh, because yeah. sometimes like uh, that you you never know how. Because I think I was also very relaxed that year because it was like okay, my goal of the year is it's 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 done. Sure. So then it's just for fun. But this year, um, I, I think the challenge uh, it will be because it's hard rock, and then like I think it's three weeks after his years in all that uh, it's a lot of recovery it needs to be done in between and, and to to train the speed or like to to don't lose the speed and then after years in all it's it's one week to or like one and a half week to TV so then it's mostly to, to rest and I believe that if I'm well at years in all then it be I can be good because uh, I had the endurance from from hard rock yeah. But if I arrive a bit burned on Sierginal, then it would be very hard to 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 link the the two of them. Yeah. Well, it'll be fun fun to watch, and I think the competition between you and Francois at Hard Rock is going to be especially exciting for us fans of the sport. I wonder if maybe you wanted to share your feelings about you know his season from last year was incredible, winning both Hard Rock and UTMB. You guys were longtime teammates with Solomon. I think you have a lot of respect for one another and you get to compete against each other again. I think for the first time since that UTMB in 2017, is there, uh, any, anything you want to share about your relationship for, with Francois or is there anything that he's done recently that's inspired you to, you know, step up your game as an athlete? Yeah, I think it's, it's well, Francois. Like uh, it's it's a master. Like when it comes to ultra endurance, like he's yeah. he's so consistent. Like all the races he's doing, like he's always there, and he's yeah. he really. I think uh, like uh, he knows how to do it. He he don't have any bad days. Like he's always there when it comes to to analyzing the race, to to doing the good preparation. And, and yeah, he's really nailing all the times and that's, that's so, so inspiring. And, and he's such a nice guy. Like, uh, it's, he's a very humble person. Like, uh, also he has, uh, three kids, a uh, family life. And, and, and I would say what really inspired me of Francois the last years is how he's been, uh, improving in the schema, uh, the last years, because he's, He's been a, a very good athlete when it comes to to long distance for very long. Like uh, um, I remember the first races with it together in the 2000. I don't know, 10, 11. He was already like uh, at that level on on long distance. But the last years, uh, especially this winter, the last two winters, he's been like competing uh, in some of the ski mountaineering World Cups and. And that's a big challenge, uh, I would say, because it's it's very fast. It's it's a completely different kind of effort, and he's been improving so so much, and uh, and that's super inspiring. And I think that will give him an extra level also for uh, for the the long distance, and that will be crazy because he's yeah. already so good. So it will be super interesting to to follow like what Francois is doing, not only this summer but I think in the following years because he he has a long career ahead of of him still. Yeah. Well, it just makes me so happy that, you know, you guys can speak so positively about one another when, you know, you guys are competitive rivals. And I think it's so good for the sport to, you know, have people like you and him who are just gracious, humble champions and, you know, Jim and Courtney DeWalter and many others in the sport exemplify the same thing. But, you know, I think it's uh, going to be really fun to see you guys compete against one another. and. Uh, you know, it'll be a positive for the sport, you know, from an observation and a fan perspective too. So Killian, before I let you go, I'd love to talk about kind of the state of the sport with you. Cause it's something you posted about recently that I think is interesting and worth talking about. And, uh, effectively just on your Instagram, people can go find it. You were just kind of talking about how it's 
it's getting harder to understand the sport and competition is getting diluted because of all these series. You mentioned it a little bit earlier in our conversation today too. As one of the sort of leaders and icons of our sport, what has you excited about trail running right now? And and what do you think we could be doing better? Well, it's it's complex. Um, first, because uh, the sport is very complex. Uh, because we we are doing a sport or practicing a, an activity that it's it's very it's very singular. Like every single race, it's completely different from another single race. Like when you think about um, uh, athletics, uh, um, a 1500 in uh, in Japan or a 1500 in uh, in um, Colorado, we look very very similar. It's in a track. It's the same distance. It's the the like the rules are so specific that uh, that makes easy to replicate inter running that's uh, that's not possible because it's uh, it's doing we are running on nature and nature it's uh, it's just different in every corner like I, I could do like 100 races starting from my house that they are completely different <laughs> that they don't resemble one to another like uh, that probably it will be 100 different winners at every race because the technicality, the, the distance, the, the, the kind of uh, metabolism that it's, uh, it's, it's working for these different efforts, they are just not the same. And, and, and that's, that's good. Like, I think that's the best thing about the running, that it's uh, very diverse. And that uh, we have a Western States and uh, a hard rock or a vertical kilometer or a Trofeo Kima. And, and all this, it's about running on the on the others. But uh, inside that, uh, of course, we can like see that it's uh, it's different uh, like uh, disciplines. And, and that comes also about the story of the sport. Uh, people running in the mountains, like for competition, it's it's not new. Like even if the sport has been growing a lot for the past uh, twenty years, um, like competitions, especially in UK with the fair running, it started like uh, more than or like two hundred years ago or, or mm-hmm. more than that, and 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 it's a philosophy behind there that it just like to go straight up and down a mountain. Uh, so of course that's very different from like uh, the culture. Uh, of like the the endurance events in the US with uh, the Western stage and lead bills and all that, where it's it's a complete different philosophy. Or uh, when sky running started, it was Marino Zicumetti that he was like a, uh, one of the best uh, alpinists at the moment and he liked it to go fast. So he was taking alpinism roads and, and just taking his friends that they were mountain guides and, and to climb up or down uh, Mont Blanc. So it was not about like um, athletics, but it was like about fast mountaineering. So all this is uh, it's what we call trial running today. And, and we, we need to understand that there are differences. We cannot talk about trial running as a singular sport, but... Uh, it's uh, it's many disciplines uh, inside, and that's something that we have been very bad, I think, uh, to to explain to the public. Because of course, it's not the same like a marathon and a 100 meter uh, when it comes to athletics. So it's not the same like a Trofeo Kima or a Western States. Like yeah. uh, one is for like climbers that go fast, and the other is for athletes that uh, can go long. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think first we would need to to really I uh, sit and explain that uh, well uh, because it's uh, for the public, but also for the athletes. I think many athletes, uh, they still don't differentiate that. And secondly, and the problem came with uh, the sport is growing. So it's, of course, more more money. It's more, um, more business around it. So um, many uh, parties want to take part of it. And even if, Talking, everyone wants 
to unite. In reality, uh, it's, it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, uh, it's uh, it would be nice to 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 at least have the discussion on on not overlapping because the sport is very diverse, as as, yeah. as I was saying that. Uh, the problem for me it's it would be good if like different parties are like taking care of one of the different disciplines but uh, when you start to overlap that I think then it's when confusion comes the most yeah. and and then like uh, and at the at the end of the journey like uh, I believe that in trail running it's more about the races because they have a very different soul each of uh, not only about the the terrain and the difficulty and the 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 technical um parts of the race but also like the soul and the ambience and and how it is like I, we were mentioning before like hard rock and team b and i think they are when you look the numbers they could be very similar like it's around 10000 meters of elevation and it's uh, 100 miles both of them but what differentiates them is not that but it's like the ambience it's it's like one is like pure competition so you feel this adrenaline at the beginning and it's like about you want to be fast and you want to compete in a team yeah, yeah. while when you are in hard rock i think it's more like you want to to share and you want to share with the other runners uh kilometers and you want to share with the aid stations and 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 it it happened to me that i'm I go to these races and probably to you, it's the same that you go to these races and you approach it very differently. Mm -hmm. And it's not because you are more or less competitive, but it's because each race have a soul. And I think that's something that oh. we shouldn't lose that on like saying, okay, we need to do a, a circuit and all the races have the same feeling, um, yeah. feeling because yeah. it, it's like, because that's what I, makes it I, special. I, yeah. yeah. It makes it special and it's not better or worse, it's just different. And that's yeah. that's the that's what I love about trail running is that uh, you can do so many races and how yeah, be able to push yourself or be able to have a more uh, a community feeling or be able to to engage yourself like mentally or technically or to just like get exhausted about the distance and like have hallucinations <laughs> on a race or or so it's <laughs> It's all about that. It's just to have different experiences. Yeah. Well, Killian, I think it is an exciting time in the sport. And I know you're a natural introvert, like you said earlier, but I'd encourage you to just use your voice a lot in this next generation. I think a lot of the things that you say just have a lot of power to them and you could be a great leader in this you know, sort of next generation. So maybe a closing question for you before I let you go, Killian you've had so much success, obviously, like there's almost no other athlete who's won more races than they've lost in their career. But I wonder if you can identify one big mistake or one big failure that you've had in your career and maybe something that you learned from it to help make you a little bit more relatable to the rest of us. Um, many, and I, I, I'm not lying when I say that when I, I go for a for a, a an activity in the mountains. I turn around the fifty percent of the times. Like I turn around because I feel that I'm not ready, that I the conditions are not or or that. So that's something that I fail like the fifteen of times which I plan an activity, and and I I've done a lot of big mistakes and that comes. Uh, I I can think about uh, when. Um, Emily and I got caught in in a storm in the in the north face of Aguidemiri. That was a huge mistake of my part of like overestimating our uh, capacities as a as a as a team, and 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 just like being so stupid on like yeah uh, going there knowing that the conditions were degradating very fast, uh, and also like when it comes to 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 competition and and, and training like. I, I think I, I yeah it's it's been some some moments that I haven't been able to to emotionally um yeah manage the the decisions uh, especially uh after like uh yeah uh 
some yeah difficult moments in the mountains and and then like uh, for a period of time like i was like trying to to avoid like the uh yeah th- those thoughts and and it was uh, a part of me i i, I don't like alcohol I, the, the taste of alcohol is something that i never like it and and for a period of time i was getting drunk at every race and it was just to to forget about like a uh, an accident that uh, we had in the mountains and i lost a friend and or like uh, I was competing also to escape from from that, saying okay, to to try to to build uh, who I was through the competition, and 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 I think that was a, a mistake. I should probably had time take more time to to figure out that without the need of competing. Um, and then in races, like it's it's more trivial, but I think like. Uh, it's funny like uh first time i went to western states like it was like okay i'm i'm a fast guy from europe and uh i went there like as i would start like in in uh in a trail here just like thinking okay it's river so i can drink there i'm not understanding what like hot means in, when you go to western states <laughs> can you believe that was already 12 years ago man that unbreakable year, yeah. the first time that you came to West Virginia. That's crazy. Yeah, it's That's sometimes there, yeah. yeah. Well, Killian, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it's just so great to have you in the sport. And it's been an honor to have you here on the podcast. Good luck with normal. Good luck with your season. And uh, thanks so much for having this chat with me. No, thank you very much. And uh, first, congrats for everything you are doing. I know also like uh, what you are doing with uh, with the, the the products, like with the equipment, but also like with the free trail. Like it's uh, uh, you are saying that uh, I can have a voice, but what you are doing, it's it's incredible to to inspire uh, guys like myself that uh, we are going out to try to to train harder every day, but also to the new generations to to explain this sport and the beauty of like going out running in the, in the outdoors. And it's, uh, yeah, it's kudos for what you're doing. And I'm sure that we will cross, but very soon in some of the races this summer. I hope so. Thanks for saying that Killian.